What is up, guys? It's me, Absol Habibi, and today we're bringing back the tier lists. Yes, the tier lists. Something that I used to do a lot of, and I'm not really sure why I stopped. I actually really enjoyed making them, and I know many of you enjoyed watching them. Um, and uh, today's tier list is actually a tier list that we've done before, EU4 Formables. Actually, I think it's almost exactly one year since I've done that tier list. But that's besides the point. Um, there's two major things. That have changed uh, since I released that video, the formables EU4 formables tier list. The first thing is EU4 changed since that last video. EU4 has had two DLCs, two patches, and um, in those DLCs, there's been new formables, which actually some of them you need the DLC to be able to form, even if you uh, update your game. Anyways, uh, the second thing that changed was me myself. I feel like from the point where I posted that video to now. I'm a much different player, much better at the game. I have a much better grasp of the game, both in single player and in multiplayer, mostly because I've just been playing the game so much in the last year. Anyways, today's uh, tier list has been organized in a way to make it more navigable for you, the viewer. Uh, there will also be chapters down below so you can skip ahead and zoom around depending on what you specifically want to see in this video for formables. But uh, the way that we did organize today's video is that we have our new formables, all of the new tags that have been added into EU4 right here in the last two uh, DLC. Then we have our German formables. I know Netherlands, Silesia, and Lotharingia aren't German, but I put them into the same category as the German formables, German. Um, then we have our Italian formables, um, which includes Dalmatia. Then we have our Eastern European formables, um, and then we have the rest of Europe formables, um, followed by Middle Eastern formables. I would consider Andalusia rest of Europe, by the way. Uh, Middle Eastern formables, I included Sokoto in Middle East. Uh, I, I just didn't know where else to put them. Um, and then we have our Indian formables, uh, followed by our Horde formables, um, and then rest of Asia. And then Maya, because it's just on its own, uh, it's just in its own category. And then followed by reformables. So these are nations that already exist in 1444, and um, you can reform them. There's actually a couple in here that we uh, that I really want to talk about, and that are actually pretty good to reform. First formable is the new formable of Aksum. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right, which can be formed by Ethiopia after completing a mission that requires you to eat, I think, 25 provinces in the Arabian Peninsula. You can also uh, directly form it through decision if you have the Tigray culture. Um, a reminder, as Ethiopia, you don't need to culture uh, swap to form this nation. You can just go through the mission tree. Um, looking at these uh, nation's ideas in a vacuum, you have 5 Discipline, Governing Capacity Modifier, Aggressive Expansion Impact, War Score Cost, Tolerance of True Faith, Tech Cost, Trade Efficiency, Yearly Inflation Reduction, Manpower. Um, all of these are going to be very useful for a campaign where you're playing in that area. However, if I was playing, I think 99% of the time, if I was doing an Ethiopia run and I formed Aksum, I would not take the Aksum ideas simply because Aksum ideas don't have the core cost reduction. And core cost reduction in single player is one of the most important modifiers that you want. You have to remember that core cost reduction um, also reduces core time. And uh, there is a limited amount of core cost you can actually get in the game. So you want to be able to get as much as possible, especially if you're trying to do like a world conquest or something. And not only that, there is no unique mission tree for this nation. Um, that being said, um, you know, if it was just in a vacuum, I'd give it a low A, but it's, this nation, most of the time, you're going to be forming it as Ethiopia. And for that reason, uh, I'm going to put it at a B tier, just like a mid B. Next is the new formable of Nubia, which you need to be a Nubian culture to form. Again, it's another new formable that does not have a unique mission tree, unfortunately. But it is pretty cool and could be cool for like a nice LARP campaign, right? You could do like a Nubian LARP campaign where you restore Nubia. Um, and in the ideas, you do have um, discipline, goods produced, uh, land fire damage. Um, uh, land fire damage isn't that big, by the way. Uh, keep that in mind. But anyways, it is there. Um, also land attrition, which late game does have a uh, big impact. But overall, no morale, uh, not really that many good ideas for blobbing. 
Uh, actually, there's literally nothing for blobbing in there except for tolerance of true faith because, you know, and unrest, I guess. So that's like four unrest from the ideas, which is pretty nice. But again, no mission tree and pretty lackluster. Again, I'm going to put this at mid B tier. The next formable is Katara, which is another African formable. This one that can be formed by the Great Lake culture groups, which is like where uh, Uganda or Rwanda, I think is. Which one is in the EU4? I think it's Rwanda, right? Um, uh, it's really cool, though, that they added this into the game because there's many multiplayer mods that have Katara Empire or Katara as uh, a formable. Um, but anyways, looking at the ideas that Paradox have given them, um, these ideas have both core cost reduction and culture conversion costs in the national ideas. That alone, even though it doesn't have a mission tree and the rest of the ideas are a bit lackluster, you know, you have construction costs, which is really good. You have manpower recovery speed, which is really good. And you have some infantry combat ability, which is okay. But, um, besides that, these aren't like any good God tier, like multiplayer ideas or anything, or, or like outstanding and single player either but just that core cost and culture conversion cost alone puts this at a minus for single player campaigns and on this tier list uh, by the way you might be noticing that a lot of these new african formables don't have mission trees but um i personally could forgive it because a lot of the nations that you'll be forming these formables with already have pretty extensive mission trees or uh, pretty decent mission trees for the most part um the only thing is I really wish that forming these nations enhanced the mission trees or at least or, or something like that or gave a new mission tree would be pretty cool. But um, that's besides the point. Next, we have the formable of Zimbabwe. Um, this one is actually only formable by Mutapa and the Raswi Empire. Um, and it does give you um, new uh, missions, so that's pretty cool. It, it's, it, it does what I basically just said. It, it enhances your already existing mission tree, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, also gives you a choice of new ideas. The one thing I don't like about this formable is that its ideas are a bit of a downgrade compared to both Razwi Empire and Mutapa, in my opinion. If you form it as uh, Batua, the only thing that you retain in terms of quality is 10 morale. You lose the ICA, lose the discipline, lose the shock damage received. If you form it as Mutapa, again, you lose the discipline, yearly inflation, and also the 10 dev costs that are in Mutapin ideas. So for that reason, I would like never really take these Zimbabwe ideas. I would probably stay as Batuan ideas or Mutapin ideas because those are the only two nations that can form it. The thing is though, I think I need to add a category this time for formables that are kind of just like railroaded or basically like you form them through mission tree and they're only these nations can form them. It's not like something you can culture swap to. All right, so I just made a category called LARP and I'm going to put both Zimbabwe and Razwi Empire in there because again, these are two formables. They give missions. That's pretty cool. Um, again, Zimbabwe ideas, I'd probably never take them, but, um, you can't culture swap to form these two nations. Um, at least as far as I know, uh, Zimbabwe, maybe you can, I'm not really sure, but, um, you can't culture swap. So I'm going to put them in their own category as LARP. LARP, by the way, stands for live action role play. It's basically saying like, these are role play formables. Next, we have Somalia. Unfortunately, Somalia does not have a mission tree, but it can be reformed by anyone with the Somali culture group. So anyone can form it uh, as long as you're not an endgame tag. Um, you can culture swap to Somali culture group and form Somalia. Uh, but they are interesting uh, because uh, when I look at their ideas, I just imagine uh, Paradox developers in like a boardroom and um, like the head lead dev is like, what is... Africa missing when they're working on this Africa DLC and someone in the meeting said uh, uh, African formable that's naval and the the develop the lead dev points at him and says that's exactly what we need and that's when they made the Somalian ideas which <laughs> I have no problem with honestly it has raid coasts in a church tradition and that alone boosts up the ideas a lot because raiding coasts can be pretty big especially if you convert to a, like a religion that no one around you is like you can use the province in Pate uh, to convert to um, a body and then convert to a body you can raid everyone around you all the Sunnis all the fetishists um, wh whomever um, the only thing is though I would never really pick these 
these ideas there is a bit of like there's a lot of lackluster in this um, there's a 33 national supply limit modifier idea and there's also a 15 galley combat ability which by the way galleys are not that great in this region um, and because of that I'm gonna put this in mid C tier next nation is Israel a new added formable in EU4 where you can form it if you are um, actually I'm not sure if it is a new tag someone in my twitch chat once said that it isn't a new tag but I personally have never seen it um, I've never seen it in EU4 before the latest patch anyways um, you just need to be Jewish to form this nation also you can't be some certain nations like uh, the Papal States and Mamluks and I think there's one other nation but um, this nation has actually really great ideas doesn't have a mission tree which is unfortunate but it has pretty great ideas it has discipline uh, you have morale of armies you have dev costs and then you have 20 percent production efficiency trade efficiency which is pretty good tolerance of true faith and unrest both in the same ideas which is really good for uh, dealing with uh, unrest uh, but the lack of mission tree and also the fact that it is a downgrade, in my opinion, from Beta Israel ideas or Simeon ideas. I'm going to have to put this in low A, a little bit above Katara. Next, we have the nation of Ayotiroa. I don't know how to pronounce this one. But it's a nation that could be formed in New Zealand by a nation with Maori as their main culture and their capital in the colonial Australia region. So forming this as not a nation starting in New Zealand would probably be extremely difficult. Um, and uh, what do you get from forming them? Well, there is no uh, mission tree. But there is core cost reduction, pretty big, minus 10, um, and 10 morale of armies. That's, those are like the two highlights of the ideas. Uh, everything besides that is pretty lackluster. Um, but the core cost reduction is pretty big. I'm going to put these guys in uh, B tier, uh, somewhere in the middle. Next, we have the nation of Hawaii, which can be formed by any Polynesian nation that owns the Hawaiian Islands. Um, Hawaii is cool and different than its New Zealand uh, counterpart, formable counterpart, in uh, that it, um, if you don't have the Hawaiian missions, you get the Hawaiian missions, and if you no don't get the Hawaiian events, you get the Hawaiian events. And Hawaiian events are cool because uh, the Hawaiian um, are the only one that can get an event called the Menahune's uh, Blessing. Which, if you do get it to fire, it's a very rare event. Um, it's part. It's the end of an event chain, actually. But it's a very rare event to proc. But if you do get it, for the entirety of the game, you get one uh, plus one to all categories to your monarchs, which is very big, very very big. Um, additionally, um, the Hawaiian ideas have core cost in them, 15 core cost reduction, 20 manpower recovery speed, and they also have the unique ability to recruit explorers and conquistadors without having, um, without having colo uh, uh, exploration ideas. Um, for that reason, I'm going to put them in low A. Next, we have the nation of Viti, which is um, a formable for the Fiji area. Um, you need to unite the Fiji area. Um, your culture has to be Melanesian and your capital has to be in the Fiji state uh, in order to form this. Um, what do you get from forming them? Well, uh, you get Viti, um, a nation with uh, Fijian ideas. Uh, which include 10 morale of armies, yearly army tradition, land attrition, aggressive expansion impact, lightship, pretty mediocre ideas altogether. Like the best thing in there is the morale of armies, I guess, and maybe the 2% missionary strength. It's, it's better than 1%, I guess. Um, I'm going to put these guys in... Uh, I'm, I'm going to put them in D. Actually, the morale of armies, I'm going to put them in low... Next, we have the nation of Siam, and this nation was added in Leviathan and has the unique modifier of plus one cavalry fire, which is actually absolutely bonkers in certain stages of the game. Um, if you didn't know this, any plus one unit modifier, whatever it is, plus one artillery fire, which Spain has, um, or like plus one infantry shock, or plus like you're making a custom nation, plus one infantry shock, plus one infantry fire, uh, they're actually very big modifiers and that's not that's not even mentioning the fact that Siam has a unique mission tree and also has 
uh, morale of armies in their ideas, 15 cav combat ability, 30 manpower, 10 dev cost, 10 tech cost, 5 discipline. These guys are easily S tier formable. Now we're getting into the German regional tags. So if you guys didn't know this, actually, there are a special modified uh, tags in Germany called German regional tags. And this includes uh, Prussia, Austria, Swabia, Pomerania, Westphalia, Hanover. Essentially, if you form one of them, you can't form any of the other ones except for Prussia. But Prussia can't form any of the other ones. So you can form uh, Prussia as Saxony or Hanover but you can't form uh, Bavaria or Saxony or Hanover as Prussia. So when you're considering the German regional tags, you have to consider that if you form this, this one, you can't do any of the other ones except for Prussia. So you are basically giving up you know, the other uh, possibility. So if you form Westphalia, you can't form Swabia, you can't form Hanover and vice versa. So, uh, the thing about Swabia is that it's actually a pretty good nation. Looking at the ideas, you have 5 construction costs, advisor costs, uh, 15 morale of armies, uh, manpower, uh, and interest per annum. Which, interest per annum in MP is actually a very big deal. And Swabia also has a pretty nice mission tree, giving you claims across North Italy and South Germany. And not only that, if you complete the Swabian path on the mission tree, you can get a permanent 5 morale of armies that sticks with you until the end of the game, as well as a permanent yearly prestige and yearly legitimacy. The thing is, in a vacuum, this is easily A tier, but you have to consider them, compare them to the other German tags, and we're going to be talking about them. And for that reason, I put this in high B. Next nation on our list is Pomerania, and arguably the worst nation in the German regional tags, uh, mostly because there's no permanent modifiers in the Pomeranian mission tree. Unless I'm wrong on this one, um, I believe the does give you some nice claims and also gives you some claims on, uh, on Poland. Um, uh, and also it does give you some temporary modifiers, but it does not have any permanent modifiers. And when we look at other German uh, regional tags, they either have things like PUs over England, I'm looking at you Hanover, um, or they have, uh, you know, admin efficiency, I'm looking at you Prussia for the end of the game, or they the mission tree makes new trade centers, I'm looking at you Bavaria. Um, and for that reason, uh, you, when you look at their ideas and compare them to the other nations as well, uh, the only m military thing you have in there is morale of armies. There are some a couple things for like trade and navy, but that's not that important in your region. It, it is semi-important, but it's not that important. Um, and for that reason, uh, I'm going to have to put Pomerania in D tier. Next, we have the nation of Prussia. And this doesn't go without saying, guys, this nation is SS tier. The ideas are just top notch, uh, best military ideas in the game. Um, you have discipline, you have 20% infantry combat ability, you have 20% morale of armies, you even have five dev costs in there, 25 manpower, army tradition, army tradition decay. And that's not even talking about the unique government type and the extensive mission tree. Of course, the government does have governing capacity issues, which in single player and even in multiplayer could become a big issue, can start making core costs too high and your advisors too high of cost. Um, and the thing is, it's not you're not stuck with this government. If you want to get out of it, um, you can use 50 reform progress or you can convert to a different faith uh, with re via rebels. Um, you know, uh, both ways you will take you out of uh, the unique government type. But the thing is, like, even without the unique government, um, the missions on top of the ideas just make this nation bonkers. In the mission tree, you have like admin efficiency that lasts until the end of the game. You have multiple uh, modifiers that you can proc th throughout the game for morale, uh, for other, uh, for other uh, temporary bonuses. Um, there is a bonuses to army professionalism and drilling. Um, overall, this nation is SS tier, and I think that most of you guys would agree with me. Next, we have the nation of Westphalia, and this is a nation that I was super wrong about in my last tier list video. I think I gave it like D or C or something like that, which is why this is actually probably arguably the second best ideas for multiplayer after Prussia. You have land force limit, idea cost, dev cost, manpower, 
discipline, advisor cost. All of these things together, those are really great for multiplayer. And not only that, the mission tree is it's it's pretty good. Gives some local dev cost temporarily. And on top of that, it also has a permanent modifier in its mission tree, uh, which gives local trade power, which is incredibly important considering that Westphalia is in the Rhineland trade node, which is if you can control the Rhineland, you just become rich. It's just such a big node that and so many nodes go into it that if you can could fully control the Rhineland, you can get rich in EU4. Um, and for that reason, um, I actually I'm going to give this nation a, like a mid A, like high to mid A, uh, probably a little bit, probably even ahead of Israel. Next, we have the nation of Hanover, which is very fitting considering we just talked about Westphalia. And Hanover and Westphalia are both very f close to each other. Both formables require land that's very close to each other. Um, and one of the most frequently asked questions that I get on my live stream and on my Discord is I can form both Westphalia and Hanover, which one should I form? If you asked me that question last year, I would say Hanover 100% of the time. Uh, you have five more dev costs, construction costs, uh, land fire damage, land fire damage received, goods produced. But if you ask me now, I would actually take Westphalian ideas and Westphalia over Hanover 99% of the time um, in multiplayer. The thing is, Westphalian's ideas of land force limit, manpower, discipline, and on top of that, you also have dev costs, advisor costs, and provincial trade power. By the way, very useful in the Rhineland node. Um, uh, makes me think that Westphalian ideas are just... A just much better overall than Hanover's ideas uh, when it comes to multiplayer. Yeah, fire damage received is kind of cool, especially in the late game. In the very late game, it's actually very impactful. Um, but that land force limit and that manpower will have much more impact in the mid game and the more important stages of the game. Um, the only thing is, I would, I'm only going to put Hanover. Hanover is still a really great tag to form, don't get me wrong, especially in single player. But the reason why I put it over Westphalia is because in single player, 100% of the time, I'd pick Hanover over Westphalia. And that's because Hanover's mission tree has a PU, like you can PU England from Hanover's mission tree, which is really cool. That can be very useful. You can incorporate that into your world conquest or whatever you're trying to do or you're trying to blob fast. You can just get a GB PU by forming Hanover. That being said, again, I would pick Westphalia, though, in multiplayer 99% of the time over Hanover. Next, we have the next German regional tag. Another German regional tag. Woo! Uh, Franconia. And this is another one that I slept on in my last tier list because I never played it or I never really like looked into it. But um, the ideas are decent. If we look at ideas, they have cav combat ability, which is not that great considering they're Western uh, tech and Western cav only gets really good later on. Um, in the game, uh, but you also have uh, manpower and dev cost and discipline. In multiplayer, I would never form Franconia, but in single player, if you are playing in that region and you want to get a PU on France, what do you do? You form Franconia, and for that reason, I'm putting this up B+, plus right next to Swabia. Bavaria, our last German regional tag until we get back to uh, the reformables down here. Uh, but uh, Bavaria is um, another great uh, German tag for a single player campaign. If you've never played as Munich or Landshut, they're pretty cool. You expand very fast. And not only that, the Bavarian mission tree gives you a PU on Platinate as well as on uh, Austria. I believe it also gives you a vassalization CB on uh, Brandenburg as well as claims into North Italy. So it's very good for nice early blobbing single player campaign. However, in multiplayer, pretty lackluster ideas. You have five dev cost, yearly army tradition and cav combat ability when it comes to combat. Which, again, when you're competing with people with morale of armies, like one guy near you probably has 20 morale of armies and another guy has 20 infantry combat ability um, on top of discipline and other stuff, um, you know, it could be a bit lackluster. 
Um, it does have dev cost, uh, but besides that, uh, again, I'm going to put this in the same, I'm going to put it a bit above uh, Franconia and Swabia, but I'm going to put it at the same tier as these three. Next, we have the HRE, which does have ideas ever since Emperor and actually goes into the S tier with both core creation cost and admin efficiency in the ideas, as well as a mission tree that gives you claims on the entirety of Europe. This is easily an S tier. Next, we have Germany. Again, the same mission tree as HRE, which gives you claims, uh, a bunch of modifiers. The thing is, it is lower than the HRE because it only has admin efficiency. It doesn't have the core cost as well. Uh, not only that, um, if I form Germany in multiplayer as Westphalia, Hanover, or Prussia, I would probably keep the Hanover, Westphalia, or Prussian ideas. Um, I'm even tempted to drop this down to A, but you know, it's really good formable. You know, admin efficiency and ideas, great mission tree stays s next we have lotharingia which uh, it's good, just gonna go into the larp uh because you can't reform burgundy and you can only form lotharingia as burgundy um and um uh, for that reason it should just be in the larp it's the best of the larp uh larp formables um but when it comes to Burgundy, I do have to say that it is a downgrade when it comes into multiplayer because you do lose discipline, the Merc bonuses, which could be useful depending on the mod you're playing, and goods produced. Um, uh, but in single player, it's definitely a huge upgrade. Core creation cost minus 20, very big, very, very big. Uh, but yes, I'm going to put it into LARP because you can't reform Burgundy. It doesn't make sense to compare it because you can't form Lotharingia as anyone except Burgundy. Next, we have Netherlands, which personally is my favorite formable in the game. I think it's really cool. Um, you get a really cool, unique government type. But not only that, you also get the most events out of any nation in EU4. Out of all the nations in EU4, I believe Netherlands has the most unique events. And most of these events give nice bonuses, modifiers, innovativeness, bunch of stuff. I think the only person that comes close is England slash GB. Um, they also get a lot of unique events. I think also Sweden gets a lot of unique events as well. But um, that alone puts it up to A tier. The only reason why this is an S tier is because their ideas are lackluster and it is a bit a mid A tier. I would put this uh, a little bit below Westphalia. The ideas, the ideas are okay. Like they have dev cost, yearly inflation, but there's no like blobbing and there's no like army quality. And uh, it's just kind of like focused around like Navy and making money. Which is, I guess, is really cool. That's the whole point of Netherlands. I'm not saying that they should have military ideas. Um, but for that reason, they get put in here. Next, we have Silesia, which, yes, counts as a formable. I'm just going to be quick on this one. They have a generic mission tree. The, the only thing good about their ideas is 10 dev costs and 10 construction costs. But literally, that's it. Um, would I ever culture swap to Silesian to form Silesia for any reason? No, I'm going to I'm very tempted to put these guys in F, but they do have construction and dev cost. So I'm going to put them in D. Next on the list is Dalmatia, which actually has some pretty decent ideas. 15 trade efficiency, 10 morale of armies, 15% reform progress growth, which is actually a rare modifier in EU4. 5 dev cost, 15 infantry combat ability, naval force limit, 15 core cost reduction and 15 morale of navies. It was almost perfect if Venice had these ideas instead. Well, they don't. But hey, you can still form Dalmatia as Venice, right? Well, there's one catch. Dalmatia has a requirement that you can't have more than 10 provinces. And as Venice, you start more with more than 10 provinces. So you have to actually give provinces away to a vassal in order to form Dalmatia. Um, I think in vanilla, that is still the strat. If you're playing Venice in vanilla, I think forming Dalmatia early is definitely the strat. Um, because you do keep your Venetian mission tree and, uh, you can form Croatia later. I I'll tell you why that's important when we cover Croatia. Uh, but, um, that being said, the requirement really, like if that requirement wasn't there, Dalmatia, I'd say was is, is easily mid tier a, but just because of that requirement of having 10 cities max, I'm going to put it mid tier B. Next on the list is Sardinia Piedmont, which, uh, is actually one of my favorite single player formables to make in EU4. Uh, not only do the ideas have both dev cost and core creation cost, which is very rare in EU4 to have both in that same idea set. That's funny because we just talked about Dalmatia, which literally has that. But um, 
they uh, have pretty decent ideas but the reason why this gets a low s tier is uh, on top of the core creation cost sardinia piedmont has a mission to give you permanent admin efficiency and that is really strong when doing a world conquest can make a world conquest a lot easier especially if you form another nation afterwards that gives admin efficiency like austria prussia or germany um which if you complete their missions you will also get additional permanent admin efficiency which will stack with the admin efficiency you got with forming sardinia piedmont for that reason i put it in low s tier Next on our list is Tuscany, which um, is uh, the formable for the Tuscan region in Italy, obviously from the name Tuscany. Um, and in my opinion, uh, the best ideas for military if you are in Italy. Um, they do only have five discipline when it comes to quality. They do also have 25% manpower. But the main reason why they're so powerful in M multiplayer, this Tuscany nation, is because they have 0.5 interest per annum in their ideas on top of another 0.5 interest per annum that you can get permanently through their mission. That's one interest per annum, stack that with economic ideas, stack that with Catholic, you suddenly have 2% loans, which if you don't if you've never fought a death war in multiplayer might not seem like a big deal but in multiplayer is actually a huge deal that your normal loans are two percent interest um for that reason i'm gonna put them in a the same level uh, uh just a little bit below netherlands actually what am i talking about these guys are definitely top tier a that interest per num is just insane chat guys it's just insane i i just called you guys chat i know you are youtube and you're not live but you are still chat. Next, we have two Sicilies. I don't know why the flag looks like this. I downloaded everything from the U4 wiki, and this is what I got. I guess this, is, is, this might be their new flag or something. I have no idea. Um, two Sicilies uh, is formable uh, in south part of Italy uh, by uh, Naples. Most uh, is the most common person that would form two Sicilies. But uh, it's also a nice tag to swap to um, when doing a tag swap campaign um uh, for some pretty nice larp missions <laughs> that let you that expand you into italy as well as into africa um they also have minus 10 core creation costs which can be useful if you don't have core creation costs before you tag swap to them um however they do have a low military quality the only military quality is morale of armies meaning that you would never see this nation formed in multiplayer or if you do see it formed they do not uh take the ideas um and uh for that reason it gets a low b tier actually i put this mid b tier just because it is pretty good in single player as well next we have italy and uh italy is a great formable in single player it is an end game tag something to consider um if you're not playing if you are playing with uh, end game tags turned on which you will be if you are playing iron man um but uh italy the thing is with Italy is that in terms of ideas militarily, they're a bit lacking. You do have 15% infantry combat ability, but that is your only quality. Uh, there's no discipline. There is no morale of armies. Um, there is manpower, 33 man manpower, which is a pretty good amount. Um, the thing about Italy, though, it is pretty good in single player. It gives you a 25 core cost reduction, which is the max you can get in national ideas very good uh that alone puts it in a tier um and what bumps it up to high a tier i wouldn't put it into s um is its mission tree which has some permanent modifiers to manpower in your uh in parts of your country and the claims you get from its mission tree are pretty extensive so i give it high a plus tier next we have bulgaria yes uh it is a formable in eu4 uh it's one that you rarely ever see um uh and does have unique uh unique ideas as well as three unique missions on top of generic missions and looking at their ideas they're actually not that bad you got 10 core cost reduction you got 10 infantry cost you got 10 morale of armies and 15 infantry combat ability their missions are pretty bad you get some claims and uh 200 mil points but hey uh despite the only thing that's making me not put it as a low B is that in order to form it, you're going to be giving up or you're going to be tag swapping uh, to Bulgarian instead of Greek to reform uh, to reform Byzantium or uh, to Turkish to form Rome, which are both better than Bulgaria. 
But hey, if we're going for a Bulgaria campaign, they have core cost reduction. Next, we have the nation of Romania, an interesting one uh, with the unique mission to impale the Sultan, which basically kills the ruler of the Ottomans and replaces the ruler with a really bad one. Um, uh, they also have decent ideas. They have five discipline, 20 manpower recovery speed, uh, land leader maneuver, uh, 10 manpower, 10 infantry cost. Uh, nothing really though for blobbing and that could make it less appealing in a single player or you know why we don't see many Romanian world conquests but um, besides the impale the sultan the mission tree is a bit lackluster there's two branches that are unique and then you have generic missions in the middle um, uh, but uh, with the with the decent military ideas I think I'm going to give these guys and their mission tree I'm going to give them a low B B minus Next, we have the nation of Ruthenia, which unfortunately, in my opinion, has not the best ideas when you compare them to both Poland as well as Russia. I think both Poland and Russia have much, much better ideas. Um, uh, that being said, uh, the main reason why Ruthenia gets formed a lot, though, isn't for its ideas. It's for the unique Zardom and alone that puts this up to A tier. This is definitely an A tier um a formable just because if you form this nation um and you are orthodox you get access to the zardom government type which is probably one of the strongest government types that you can have in eu4 the mission tree is decent gives some claims nothing permanent though um uh, but again uh, the main reason why you form ruthenia especially as poland isn't for the ideas or the missions it's for the unique government type the zardom Next, we have the Poland-Lithuania Commonwealth. I would put this in the LARP territory, but you can reform Poland and then you can form Poland-Lithuania from that uh, method, you know, form Poland and then Poland-Lithuania Commonwealth. Uh, the problem with this tag is that it's an endgame tag, and if you form this, you can't form Ruthenia. And in multiplayer, you're going to want to form Ruthenia. In single player, it doesn't really matter. You can stay PLC the entire time. You can finish the game as Commonwealth. If you don't plan to tag swap, then why not? Uh, being a Zardom is not that important in single player. Um, but uh, 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 the fact that this is an end game tag really demotes it a lot. It does give you new missions. Uh, it gives you, like I believe, two or three new missions on top of the Polish uh, mission tree. Um, um, but the lack of new ideas... And the fact that this is an endgame tag, I think I'm going to have to put this all the way in D. Which is a bit disappointing. Uh, I wish uh, Commonwealth Formable did a little bit more. Next, we have Greece. And honestly, I want to put this in F tier. Greek ideas in a vacuum are not that bad. You have 10 infantry combat ability. You have 10 trade efficiency, 10 idea cost, 10 advisor cost, 10 core creation cost. The thing is about Greece is that if you're culture shif shifting to form Greece, um, you can just form Byzantium instead, which is one of the best formables in EU4. And I believe if you form Greece, you cannot form Byzantium. I might be wrong on this one. Um, I've never done a Greek, a, a Greek campaign. Maybe it's time to do a Greece campaign, lul. Uh, but I'm very tempted to put it in F tier, but I can't because it has core creation costs in there and idea costs and infantry combat ability. I'm going to put this in D uh, below Pomerania. Next, we have Russia, which I'm going to put in S tier right behind Germany. Actually, I might even put it a little bit ahead of Germany. I'd say in single player, obviously, Germany is better, but uh, multiplayer, I would have want Russia any day of the week. But um, this is actually really hard to say which one is better for me in my eyes. But Russia, you get Zardom, you get great ideas, you get the Siberian frontiers. You also get an extensive amount of events, Russian events. There is the period of bad events that you get, but after that, it's all good events. Um, you do also have a great mission tree. Although the only permanent modifier that you can get is Russia is only in the Age of Revolutions. Uh, the mission tree is really great for the early game as well as just building up as well as expansion uh, and the claims that it gives as well as the popable modifiers that you can use throughout your campaign. 
Russia is just the better version of Ruthenia in every single way. Even if you choose to form Ruth Russia just for Tsardom and you ha keep ideas like Swedish ideas, for example, it's still super strong and can make your nation really good just by forming it. Next, we have Kurland. Uh, it's basically like the nation that Livonian order can pick once they're no longer Catholic. Um, but it's a nation that you literally never see. Uh, for good reason, too. It has no missions um and uh has no events so basically it's just a very stale nation um also in terms of ideas it has discipline nice but it also has cav combat ability and cav cost so i guess it's a cavalry nation as well i'm gonna put these guys uh, i'm gonna but they have discipline though i can't put them f tier i'm gonna put them low d low d these nations man they put like core costs and discipline in there and i can't put them in f i just can't next we have gbr which unfortunately or great brand um uh, unfortunately is an end game tag which um really sucks because i really wish it wasn't an end game tag but it is um, looking at the ideas, we have 20% goods reproduced, very rare, 5 discipline, and beside, outside of that, there is no other military quality. Um, does have some colonization in there and a bunch of navy stuff. This does get low S tier for missions, events, and also it's the best navy ideas in the game. If this was a navy chart, you know, obviously this would be right here. With English culture and British ideas, like... I don't think anyone should be able to beat you navally unless they outnumber your boats or they're really good at naval rotations. And for that reason, I put them at low S. The thing is, I could care less about navy, but I still mention it for the two people that care about navy. Next, we have the Roman Empire, which surprisingly lacks a lot of flavor, especially considering like the main goal for many countries in the EU4 time period is to be considered Rome. Um, the thing is though, uh, uh, most people form Rome and then close the game, right? Like you do form Rome, get Mare Nordstrom and you're like, all right, done. Like it's very rare that you see people form Rome and then use their ideas to do a world conquest or something. People do do that. I'm not saying they don't, but, uh, I'm just saying that it is a bit rare and that's probably why Paradox never felt like they needed to add flavor to this nation. There's no unique events. There's no unique mission tree. Um, uh, however, the, uh, the ideas are very good. Five discipline, um, uh, land force limit, infantry combat ability, 20 core cost reduction, 33 manpower. Actually, less core cost reduction than Italy. <laughs> Five less core cost reduction. And no admin efficiency like Germany. Um, and due to the lack of missions, lack of flavor, and the ideas being, they're pretty good. Uh, and the requirement to form it. I'm going to have to put these in mid B tier. Next is Spain. Oh, Spain, Spain, Spain. This is definitely S tier. Top of the S tier, guys. Plus one artillery fire is bonkers. It's so strong. It only kind of tapers off near the late game in the last hundred years. But plus one artillery fire, you get a full back row, baby. Oof, man, you're doing so much damage. And that's on top of the Spanish mission tree as well as, um, you know, uh, the fact that uh, forming Spain um, integrates another country for free, like the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth decision. Um, it is an endgame tag. However, you know, you already have one of the best ideas for uh, military and multiplayer. Single player, though, a bit lackluster. Um, might demote it a little bit, but in my eyes, it's still one of the best idea groups uh, as well as mission combinations in EU4 and deserves to be top of the S. Next, we have Scandinavia. Oh man, this is F tier. Um, this literally is a formable that hurts you. Um, it doesn't give you ideas. It doesn't give you missions. It doesn't increase your mission tree. Um, and it, it's just overall really bad. It doesn't even give you empire rank. The reason why it's super bad is because you lose access to your unique events. By forming Scandinavia as Sweden, you no longer get Swedish unique events, which is one of the best things about playing Sweden. Even Denmark has a very long list of unique events that you no longer get access to once you form Scandinavia. And for that reason, I have to give it an F. Next, we have Iceland, which is actually super easy to form. You just need less than four provinces. 
Yes, you heard that right. You need to have less than four provinces to form this formable. Already, this is getting close to F tier just because of that. But hey, you don't need to culture swap, right? <laughs> but um, looking at their ideas now, there is reform progress growth, a rare modifier. You also have discipline, construction cost, dev cost, a colonist, culture conversion cost. Overall, actually pretty good ideas. I believe it was Emperor that Paradox decided the Iceland shouldn't have generic ideas, national ideas. But um, ever since then, Iceland has had pretty decent ideas. But the requirement for it to be four cities or less um, uh, makes me want to put it into LARP tier. But I'm going to actually just put it into D. Next, we have the Muslim nation of Andalusia. Very cool color. Very, very nice color. Actually, one of my favorite colors in EU4, believe it or not. Um, if actually if we're making this list by color, it would look very, very different if we're talking about if we even just put it in as one of the factors. Maybe I should have. <laughs> but anyways, Andalusia, the problem I have with it, even though it is a pretty good tag, has pretty nice mission tree, pretty fun mission tree. Um, it feels like a worse version of Spain, right? Um, the thing is, instead of uh, plus one artillery fire and five discipline, you get 15 uh percent of uh, 15 percent fire damage received on andalusia you also get some quantity differences i think uh but overall not as good as spain uh you also don't get an age bonus in age of reformation like spain the you know, spanish tercios um uh and because it's an end game tag um uh, despite all of this it's still pretty good ideas and still pretty strong nation to form I would just have to put it uh, probably between Ruthenia, uh, probably between Italy and Ruthenia. Next, we have Armenia, which used to be, I think, in a 1444 start date, but is not anymore. It's a bunch of other little smaller states that can form Armenia. Um, it can be reformable by anyone with the Armenian culture as their primary culture. So you can reform it as long as you're not an endgame tag. Um, uh, I don't know why you would do that, though, because there is no missions for Armenia um, and their ideas. Uh, they have 10 dev cost, I guess, and nearly army tradition. <laughs> but besides that, pretty bad. I'm going to have to give these guys low D just because they have dev cost. Dev cost, man. I'm telling you, the, the devs know exactly what to do to not make them F tier. Jerusalem. This is a tag that I used to think was really cool when I first started playing E4. Um, and little known fact, uh, most people think that you can only form Jerusalem as Provence, Cyprus, the Knights, Athens, Naxos, or Epirus. But Jerusalem actually is reformable pre-age of uh, pre-age of absolutism. If you are a Catholic nation and you move your capital to the Arabia or Egypt region, if you do that, you will the pop up or the the decision will appear to form Jerusalem. So you can be any Catholic nation, or you can be Mamluks and then convert to Catholic. I don't know how you would get Catholic, but you can convert to Catholic and then form Jerusalem. I think someone did that before, but. Um, the cool thing about Jerusalem is uh, the really cool LARP missions. Um, I did a Provence campaign, and my favorite part about that Provence World Conquest was when I was playing as Jerusalem, and I was going through the mission tree. And uh, despite looking at the roleplay perspective of Jerusalem, uh, one of the coolest aspects of Jerusalem is their unique government type, which is a crusader state, which gives you the Deuce Vault CB, um, the, the religious CB that you get from finishing religious ideas, uh, without finishing religious ideas, just by being Jerusalem. I'm going to have to put these guys in low S tier. It's not something that you see ever in multiplayer because, you know, who's going to be Catholic in the Middle East that holds Jerusalem? You never really see that in EU4 multiplayer ever. But um, Jerusalem is probably like just the Knights or Cyprus or Provence to Jerusalem is always a great single player campaign, a lot of fun. And the unique government type, plus pretty decent ideas. And the mission modifiers aren't bad as well. I would put this in low S tier. I think, though, it's really being carried by how cool the, the, the single player experience is. Next, we have the Nation of Room, which is a way to get the Ottoman government type if you are a Muslim nation who controls Anatolia. Um, of course, uh, this is like the multiplayer go-to if you're playing Mamluks, unless you're playing a mod like Gecko MP mod, which makes it impossible for the Mamluks to form room. Um, 
but um, I think it's uh, probably one of the strongest ideas in the game. Uh, not the strongest, but pretty strong. You have morale of armies, manpower recovery speed, discipline, core creation cost, uh, construction cost, and land force limit. Uh, both useful. All of these are useful in multiplayer and single player. Um, also, tolerance of heathens and simultaneously missionary strength versus heretics makes playing the dimmy um, with room very, very easy. Um, the thing is, the reason why I'm very hesitant, I want to put this S tier, but it doesn't have missions. I think I'm going to keep it low S tier just because it gives you the Ottoman government type, which is a very strong Ottoman uh, government type, as well as giving you Janissaries, which are pretty powerful in certain stages of the game. Next, we have Persia, another strong idea set with morale na uh, armies, with uh, manpower, with goods produced, discipline, uh, manpower recovery speed. All really good uh, and will help you a lot when you are contesting against whoever is in Anatolia, whether it's a Rum, Mamluks, or an Ottomans. Um, not only that, it also gives you the unique government type of the feudal uh, theocracies, which gives you bonuses that you can use to uh, decrease dev cost in your capital. Not only that, Persia has unique events, unique um, and a unique mission tree, kind of weak mission tree, but it does have some unique uh, aspects to its mission tree. Um, and uh, again, this is a nation that I want to put high A, low S, but uh, it's really hard to put it there. Um, feudal theocracy is not as good as the room government type and um, the mission tree is pretty lackluster on Persia. I would have to put it probably high A. Next, we have Egypt. I don't know why you form Egypt. I'm pretty sure this removes your Mamluk government type too. Uh, unless it's modded, I don't know why you're forming Egypt. I'm going to just put this F. Next, we have Arabia. This is like Egypt, but worse because you're an endgame tag. <laughs> like, you don't get ideas. You don't get a mission tree. You just get a new color and name. And you're not, But the worst part is if you form this... You are stuck this forever. They're both still better than Scandinavia. Sokoto. Okay. This nation's like just impossible to form. I'm just going to put this in LARP. Like you need to be like 1770 and then you have to wait for an event that may or may not fire. And then if you get that event, you can form Sokoto and then you're Sokoto for what? The last 30 years of the game? What's the point? Uh, I'm just going to put it as LARP. Moogles. Okay, this goes SS tier. Arguably in single player. Well, uh, obviously in single player, I would put this over this. But, um, you know, uh, multiplayer, single player, it doesn't really matter. Moogles is really good formable um, in a single player just because of the Dewam uh, system, which assimilates cultures. So, you know, don't need to deal with cultures at all. You just eat and blob and you get bonuses for eating those cultures as well, which makes doing world conquests uh, a lot a lot easier and not only that um there's weird interactions you can do with the Dewan if you form other countries before forming moogles i did that again in my provence campaign uh which was definitely very cool um the thing is with moogles uh in multiplayer you why you never see them is that moogle ideas are not better in multiplayer than uh than Timurid's ideas. Timurid's ideas are stronger for fighting player wars. Uh, it's the same thing with Persia. Both idea groups are way better for fighting player wars. But the reason why this gets SS tier is just the Mughal Dewam is just too powerful and it's so vital to many people uh, completing their first world conquest or even people doing like speed runs and stuff like that uh, as non hordes. Uh, they used Mughals in the past. Anyways, uh, my point is, is that Mughals are on their own level, same way as Prussia. Next, we have Indian formables. Well, uh, specifically the ones for unifying India, one for Muslims and one for the Hindus. Uh, Hindustan for the Muslims and Bharat for uh, the Hindus. And again, this is just like Westphalia and Hanover all over again. People always ask, which one is better to form? Which one should I form? Um, I can form both. You know, it's very easy to switch your religion in uh, India if you are Muslim. It's harder if you are a uh, Hindu, though, if you're trying to become Muslim. Both nations have exactly the same mission tree. Like, literally, they have the same exact mission tree. I think they're called Indian Empire missions or something like that. But anyways, uh, their mission trees are exactly the same. 
Um, the only thing that we can compare, this is literally uh, unlike Hanover and Westphalia. The only comparison difference here is uh, looking at the ideas. Um, uh, Hindustan has the 15 infantry combat ability, 20 uh, manpower, governing uh, capacity modifier, discipline, dev cost, land fire, while Bharat has admin efficiency, years of separatism, stability cost, tech cost, and promoted cultures. Um, the thing is with these nations, they're both, I would say both are top A tier. Uh, I put them around here right next to Italy and Andalusia. Um, the thing is, uh, I would pick Hindustan if I was in multiplayer and I would pick Baharat ideas if I was in single player. That being said, though, preferably to both of these ideas, I would go with Nepal, which is actually our next nation. Nepal, Nepal, Nepal. People call it the Prussia of India. But in reality, Prussian ideas are way better. But uh, the thing about Nepal ideas is that literally every idea except for the dip rep one are military focused. Just look at the ideas. Manpower recovery speed, land force limit, fort defense, manpower, army tradition, morale, infantry combat ability, leader siege, discipline. It's literally all military ideas. And because of that, it makes them really, really good. Just because of that, in vanilla MPs, you always see this nation coming. Usually, Bengal's the one that forms it. But you see people just forming this nation from like the weirdest positions, just like people diplo to be able to form Nepal. Um, which is why you see a lot of MP mods just get rid of the Nepal formable because it doesn't really make much sense. Um, just for that reason, it's going to go low S. Its mission tree is lackluster. Actually, I kind of want to downgrade it. But, you know, it's very unique in EU4 where a nation's ideas are just all military ideas. Next is the nation of Deccan. This is a nation that last formable tier list I definitely made a mistake on. This nation is really good. You have really good ideas. Land force limit, discipline, morale of armies, goods produced, infantry combat ability, um, admin efficiency. Uh, the problem with this nation in vanilla is that you need to be tech 20 to form it. Yes, you need to be tech 20. Some mods in MP make it tech 10, and that's why you see this nation be formed a lot. Um, it really, it honestly, would I would put it in low S tier uh, if it wasn't a tech 20 requirement. Um, but it is a tech 20 requirement. So I put it here, just above Hindustan and Bharat. By tech 20, like I've already eaten all of India. If I've started in India, I've already eaten all of India and I'm doing some other stuff. So, uh, <laughs> you know, there is tech 20 formables here like Germany, but Germany's mission tree at least gives you claims on all of Europe. So there is progression after tech 20. Rajputana, Rajputana, Rajputana. Actually, a nation that I over overrated in my last formables tier list. This one is pretty good. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty good. Uh, if you're non Miwar, if you're not Miwar, it's a way to get access to the Moar mission tree, uh, which does have three military modifiers that last 30 years that you can pop. That being said, uh, I think that it is okay. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. You do have land fire damage, core cost, morale of armies, discipline, artillery cost. Pretty good ideas. Don't get me wrong. Definitely really good for India. Um, but. Um, they're not as good as I used to think they were. Definitely still A tier. I don't know if that's where I put them last time. I put them over here near Netherlands. Next is Punjab, the Sikh formable of India, which again is another really strong formable for India. India has a lot of pretty decent formables. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, you have so many good nations to form outside of just Bharat and Hindustan. Um, and if you're going for a Sikh run, yeah, definitely form Punjab. It might even be worth converting to Sikh as like a nation like Delhi to get much better ideas because Delhi is actually one of those Indian nations that lacks like a formable to make. Like Bengal has uh, Nepal. Miwar just has pretty good ideas and has Rajputana later. Bahmanas has the Khan, unless the Khan is tech 20 and it's vanilla. Uh, if we're talking about MP. Um, but yeah, definitely very strong. Uh, you know, you have morale of armies, again, discipline, uh, goods produced, manpower. Um, it does have some cav stuff in there too. Very unlikely that you'd be building much cav, but uh, definitely really good and definitely A tier. I put it a little bit over Rajputana. Next is Marathas, the Marathi formable of India. Um, this one compared to other Indian formables is kind of weak. If we look at it, uh, terms of ideas, um, 
they're not as good. You have core cost reduction in there, which is nice, which is good for single player. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but in terms of military quality, your only military quality is 15 cap combat ability. There isn't discipline. There isn't morale. Uh, there is reform progress growth and goods produced. <laughs> but yeah, great single player nation. It could be good for a single player campaign, especially if you start as a nation like Baroda or Gwalor. You know, small nations in India could be fun to start as a small nation for Marathas and conquer India. Um, but we're looking at it compared to other formables. I'm going to have to give this guy a low B. Now we are on Nagpur, they, another Indian formable. This is on like the same level as Marathas. Again, no unique mission tree. Uh, you, don't, you don't get a unique mission tree from forming this nation. Uh, ideas are okay they're not like the best um you have morale of armies construction cost shock damage um but besides that well unrest as well but uh besides that it's uh pretty pretty mo mediocre all around and compared to other indian formables not as good i'm gonna put this just below maritas next we have the nation of tibet and this nation gets s tier i'm gonna put it uh right here in s tier like kind of close to the middle uh for one reason and one reason only and that's because tibet is the only way to go a uh, horde if you don't start as a tribe and you also aren't a uh, new world religion like uh like mayan or or uh or nawadal and even then though that i don't even think that's possible to do anymore uh but if you did not know this, uh, Tibet in their mission tree has a mission called invite the Khans. And when you invite the Khans, you have an option to set one of the Khans as the ruler of your nation, turning you into a horde. So that means that you can use uh, Tibet and become a horde no matter what nation you are. That means you could have been, I don't know, you could have been Siam, which is the kind of a campaign that I want to do. Where you go start as Sam, uh, uh, you start as a nation that can form Siam early, um, and then uh, form Siam. Then you form Tibet, but you keep your Siam ideas, and then you do the mission to become a horde. And now you're a horde with plus one cap fire. Could be good. Could be good. I don't know. I haven't tried it. But uh, just because of that, since this is literally the only way that you can become a horde in EU4 if you're not a tribe. I have to put it into mid S tier. Next, we have the Great Horde, which honestly, one of the best ideas for blobbing in EU4 as a horde. You have 25 core creation cost, which is the max you can get in national ideas. And on top of that, you have some other ideas that are really useful for uh, a blobbing campaign and a very wide campaign um, all around. Even the dev cost is very useful um, as this nation. Uh, where it is lackluster, though, is uh, that the Great Horde has generic Tartar missions. And for that reason, I have to give it a low A, uh, just ahead of Israel. Vanilla Bukhara. If you watch some of my MP videos, you know that Bukhara... Uh, actually, this is the Uzbek flag. This is not the Bukhara flag, but it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, the, I, it probably should be in LARP because the only nation that can form it is Uzbek. But... Um, but uh, this is a, a formable for Uzbek uh, in vanilla that does nothing except make you not a horde. It makes you a horde into an ikta, which in single player is a huge, huge downgrade. You'd rather be a horde. Um, uh, I, I'm going to put this in F tier. Um, again, mods, they give Bukhara actually good ideas or they give Bukhara Citrata or they give them Eastern unit pips or something like that. That makes them good. But in vanilla, it's just a really bad formable. I'm going to put it here in F. Yuan, 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 uh, formable uh, for Mongolia and Oirat, basically, um, which requires you to uh, to eat up China unless you want to lose your horde government type. Um, if you want to lose it, you can just become take the mandate and then uh, form it. But I wouldn't recommend doing that, uh, especially if you're trying to blob really fast. Uh, I'd recommend staying a horde, uh, which you can do by, I believe, if you eliminate Ming and just delete the mandate of heaven when you form you can form yuan without having the requirement of having the mandate of heaven uh which will keep you a horde um that being said again 25 core creation costs the max you can get 
so instantly an A tier nation. Um, and despite its mission tree not being existent or sharing it with Oirat rather, this is still going to be a high A tier nation. I'd put it a little bit, yeah, I'd put it here above uh, Italy just because it has both core cost and admin efficiency in the ideas. I might even put it at high A, like top A. A plus. That being said, in multiplayer, if you're playing vanilla, I'm pretty sure it's better to keep Oirat ideas over Yuan ideas. Just a heads up. Mongol Empire. This is almost on the same level as Roman Empire. But the thing about Mongol Empire is that you see way more people like playing as the Mongol Empire and continuing on after forming the Mongol Empire than people who form Rome and just stop the campaign after forming Rome. And that's because most people who are formed Mongol Empire are already doing a world conquest, right? And uh, the modifiers that it gives are really good. Doesn't have ideas. Uh, does have a huge swath of land to, to be able to form it. Does have a unique government though. Um, and that alone uh, puts it up at B. Pi B. It's too much stuff to require to form to be an A or an S. Anyways though, this nation is really good. Really good for uh, blobbing. Really good for multiplayer. Gotta give it a high A. Probably... Yeah, probably even higher than these guys. You pop all the missions at once for one war, which uh, you can do to like really just like maybe you're getting 3v1. Some Manchu players do that. They save three missions uh, for one war. Uh, but you can get 10 shock damage, 10 morale of armies, 15 siege ability, 20 manpower recovery speed, uh, 15 land maintenance. Um, and uh, does just the military modifiers just from your mission tree. Next, we have the Qing Empire, which is basically Manchu's uh, formable after you conquer China. And it's one of those tags that you see a lot and people play in single player, but you rarely see in multiplayer. That's mostly due to the way that Fractured China works in uh, most MP mods since Ming is not playable. Um, but um, looking at it just by ideas, it is an upgrade if you're blobbing, a downgrade if you're fighting uh, against players. The uh, idea wise missions, it is just the Manchu mission tree plus extra missions. Um, I was wished that the Qing mandate worked differently or was a bit different than the Ming mandate, but it is pretty much the same. And if you do take the mandate, that is something that you're going to have to deal with. It's not the end of the world and it's not like detrimental by taking the mandate. But overall, since these ideas do include admin efficiency and 20 core cost, that make them really good for blobbing and really good for world conquest. And this is going to go into the S tier right next to Germany. Lan Fang, dude. Lan Fang. Okay, this nation, this formable, used to be on the same level as Sokoto, okay? Like, it made no sense. Like, you can only form it after waiting for specific events to fire in, like, the 16 or 1700s. And when you form it, the game is already almost over. So it's like, why did I even form this nation? However, uh, ever since Leviathan, the nation of Sambas can form Lanfang if they own one province in uh, a specific province uh, that Ming controls day one. So if you control that province, you can make the Lanfang Republic, which is one of the ways in EU4 to go becoming uh, to become a uh, a republic. It is the Lanfang Confederacy type republic, which is close to Peasants Republic, where you don't have a nobility's estate. So you do lose your nobility's estate, which is pretty sad because nobility estate is pretty nice. But hey, you're a republic. Looking at the ideas, there is also 10 morale of armies, 10 goods produced, 10 dev cost, um, uh, 15 production efficiency, and yearly inflation reduction. Also infantry combat ability. Overall though, uh, Lam Fang could be really interesting for a single player campaign. Actually, I've been thinking of doing a Lam Fang uh, where I start as Sambas. It's uh, the uh, three province miner that starts next to Brunei with the gold mine could be very interesting maybe world conquest on top of that it also has a pretty nice color and name and flag this is a pretty cool looking flag anyway since it's no longer like you have to wait for these really crazy event to form and stuff it's not in the larp anymore it's not on the same level as sakoto um i would put it though uh the fact that you lose your nobility estate and the ideas are a bit lackluster and the fact that you need to take a province from Ming 
uh, in order to form it. So it's not something that you can form immediately. Um, I'm going to have to put this in load mid B. Actually, there's no mission tree either. So I'm just going to put it low B. Next, we have Japan, which, um, you know, looking at their ideas in a vacuum, right? You have discipline, manpower, ship durability, aggressive expansion, and infantry combat ability. Looking at that alone, you'd say, okay, you know, Japan is actually pretty decent ideas. However, the thing is about forming Japan, there's three problems. Uh, the first problem is that when you're forming Japan, you usually have better ideas. You either have like Shimizu or Oda or Usagi. Um, all three of those nations that I just mentioned all have better ideas or date. They all have better ideas than Japan. The second problem that you have with forming Japan is that when you form Japan, you lose the shogunate or independent daimyo government type which is uh, important because if you're a multiplayer, you want to be independent daimyo for that extra morale. And if you are a uh, playing single player, Shogun is one of the best uh, government types to do world conquests with because you can literally make the entire world your vassal without going over uh, vassal or relation limit. The third problem with forming Japan is depending on what nation you form Japan with, you might not even get a new mission tree. If you form Japan as Oda, you will literally get the same mission tree. So not only did you lose your unique government type, you're not getting better ideas. You also have the same mission tree and you're an endgame tag. Um, all of these factors, you know, bring Japan down uh, to a C. I would put it as a high C. Of course, multiplayer mods out there make it so you can be independent daimyo while still being Japan or give Japan buffed ideas. And that's why you see Japan a lot in multiplayer. Next, we have Malaya or Nusantara, I think it's called, depending on the way you form it. Um, this is a purely naval nation, obviously, for a nation that's literally all islands. However, it's one of the best naval ideas in, uh, in the game. Morale of navies, naval combat off of own coast. Um, even galley combat ability, which is very impactful in that area, considering that it's all inland seas now. And to top it off, you have ship durability. Malaya is literally the only idea set in the game that can contest with Great Britain one on one. But the fact that you don't get a unique mission tree from forming this and uh, that you don't get any uh, events from forming Malaya, there's no Malayan events. Um, it really downgrades the nation and will put it into A, despite being the only nation that can contest Great Britain. Between Westphalia and Netherlands. Next, we have Sean, which uh, is a bit interesting. It's in the same region as Siam, one of our top formables, but it's nothing like Siam. Um, your two missions that you get, yes, your two unique missions on top of your generic mission tree that you get. Um give you claims and subjugation CB on land that you probably already took when you formed this nation. Also, when looking at the ideas, they're nowhere even close to Siam. Remember uh, Siam's ideas? Well, yeah, uh, look at Sean's ideas. You got manpower, manpower recovery speed, uh, and looting speed. Yes, looting speed. Very, very important, very impactful. Anyways, uh, this is probably a low D. It's not an F. It's not as bad as these other ones. At least it has unique ideas. Next, we have Maya, which I'm going to just put into LARP because the only way to form it is if you are the Mayan faith. You can form it as Aztecs, by the way. If you go start as Aztecs and then convert to the Mayan faith and then do all the reforms and then make Maya, you can do it as Aztecs. But the thing is... Um, you know, we could look at the ideas, but um, the Mayan ideas, um, you don't get them. If you form Maya, you don't get the Mayan ideas. And forming this nation is really hard um, or pretty much impossible if you're not starting in Central America. Um, and for that reason, I'm just going to put it into the LARP. Now we're getting into reformable territory. Nations that exist at 1444, but you can reform them. Um, and uh, we do have some interesting ones to talk about here. Um, this video is probably going to be my longest video. Yeah, I, you know, just thinking about it, all the things that I talked about. But we are now on Saxony. Uh, we are going to be talking about German regional tags again. Uh, just a reminder, uh, German regional tags are nations that um, if you form them, you cannot form another German regional tag except for Prussia, but not vice versa. So Saxony, Austria, they can form Prussia, but Prussia cannot form Saxony and Austria. 
also if you form Saxony, you can't form Westphalia or form uh, or form Austria or form Hanover. If we're looking just at ideas, um, Saxony is just like the other German formables. It has discipline in there. Um, it also has dev costs, advisor costs, goods produced. Uh, but in terms of military, literally the only thing you have is discipline, which is no good in multiplayer. That's all you got. It's just discipline. Uh, no manpower, nothing. Um, so something to consider. However, uh, Saxony does have a pretty cute mission tree. And in that mission tree, you can get a permanent uh, production efficiency uh, modifier for the entirety of the campaign. Um, also, if I think if you subjugate Brandenburg or you just own like... Uh, most of Brandenburg's land um, you can get a uh, five discipline or 2.5 discipline and five morale for 30 years or 20 years something like that another cool thing to consider about Saxony is that if you were going to go uh, Prussia and you were using the Saxon culture because the Saxon culture is one of the cultures you can use to form Prussia um, and you were culture shifting to Saxon um, and you're not a German regional tag, or you were never were a German regional tag, you could reform uh, Saxony just to pop some missions right before you form Prussia, which is a pretty smart thing that you can do, something cool that you can do along the way, just might as well. It's like, oh, I'm already Saxon culture. Um, that being said, um, when we consider it and compare it to other German regional tags, um, I think it's a bit lackluster considering that you have to compete with nations that get PUs over France and England and Austria. And, you know, you just have a pork lane mission that it changes the price of pork lane all across the world, which can be a bit troll, I guess. But uh, I'm going to have to give Saxony because it has to compete with the other German regional tags. I'm going to give it a low B. Austria, probably one of the better nations to reform. Uh, again, one of those nations that Paradox decided to give like a hundred bajillion events, uh, mostly related to the Habsburg and the Habsburg dynasty. Not only that, forming Austria basically guarantees you like a very high skill air at some point because uh, if you're reforming Austria, most likely you don't have the Hasburg, uh, uh, Hasburg on your throne. And that means that you can fire the Hasburg uh, air event, which basically you'll get an event. It'll be like, you want to make this 666 your air and it's a Hasburg. And you're like, yeah, sure. And once you do that, you can get all of those PUs and all of the, your family spreading all across Europe. And that's not even considering um, considering the insane mission tree that has bunch of perm modifiers, bunch of claims, uh, all the way to China and Australia. Austria is definitely an ST reformable. I'd put it uh, just uh, on the same tier as Sardinia Piedmont, a bit better than Sardinia Piedmont, even better than uh, better than Tibet. And that's it for German regional tags. Yes, surprise, surprise, Swiss is not a German regional tag. I bet some of you out there are going to be like, oh, he's going to talk about German regional tags again. Anyways, though, Swiss is a cool formable. And this is a, a like Lanfang and that you can become a republic as a non-republic. I think Swiss and Lanfang, I might be wrong, are the only two that switches you to a republic if you weren't a republic before. Um, I believe Swiss, though, if you're a theocracy, you stay a theocracy. So for whatever reason you want to become a republic, uh, forming Swiss is one way to do it. Um, uh, for that reason um, alone, that puts it in B. Uh, does the ideas and the missions pop it up to an A? That's where I can't I can't put it above Swabia. The the other Germans, uh, I just feel like they have. I know Swiss is not German. I'm just calling it German because of the way that EU4 works and the culture groups. Um, but uh, I cannot put it over Swabia, Franconia, and Bavaria. I just feel like all three of those are better. That being said, um, you can form Swabia as Swiss, so there's nothing stopping you from forming Swiss and then forming Swabia, uh, which is a pretty good idea. Um, and you can you can form all of these as Swiss. Swiss is not a German regional tag. Um, I think actually just because it's not a German regional tag, it probably gets boosted up to A-. minus. This is a rough one. Because it doesn't have to compete with the other ones. Yeah, because it's not a German regional tag. Yeah, I'll give it an A-. 
Now, a uh, Byzantium reformable. Uh, this this is gonna go uh, into S tier, probably near, uh, probably near. Uh, the ideas of Byzantium isn't that good. That's the thing. But the reason why it's S tier is because Byzantium events. If you have the Purple Phoenix DLC, Byzantium. Just playing Byzantium, you're just like, here's 50 monarch points. Here's 50 mil points. Oh, we reconquered Greece. Here's a bunch of bonuses. Oh, we conquered this. Here's a bunch of bonuses. Here's a crazy mission tree uh, that basically gives you claims on all of the old, old Roman Empire. Um, so that alone just puts it in S. Even the thing is, if it had good ideas like better ideas the ideas are good don't get me wrong byzantium ideas are really good in single player you know especially if you're doing a one faith don't get me wrong but in multiplayer a bit lackluster if you know if you're trying to take better ideas byzantium isn't the way to go but um but just because of the things that i mentioned previously alone puts it into s tier uh probably uh right here near germany uh, I'd put it, uh, I'd probably even put it up there, but if Byzantium had a unique government type or had just slightly stronger ideas or a combination of both, it'd probably be high S or even SS tier. I lost Croatia's footage somehow, but uh, I gave it A tier because it has two perm modifiers in its missions that are pretty easy to get. One gives dev cost and the other gives years of separatism, which are both really great uh, for single player and multiplayer campaigns. Delhi. Okay, this is one of those reformables that are are going to be again A tier, not because of ideas. Missions are pretty good on Delhi, but because of reconquest claims. You reform Delhi as like Jampur and you have reconquest claims on a lot of stuff or claims in general. Um and uh for that reason I'm going to put Delhi up in A tier around uh here. Not for their ideas, remember, not for their ideas, but just because it's Delhi. England reformable. Access to all of English events. Yes, sign me up. English mission tree. Ooh, so big. Ideas, of course, they're okay. They're not the best. But um, yeah, it could, be, it could be good to pop some missions, reform them to pop some missions and do stuff like that. I would have to put them probably uh, in low A or B. Yeah, low A. Ethiopia, reformable, and that's also now an endgame tag, something to consider. Um, the thing is, uh, Ethiopia probably has the best blobbing ideas out of any African nation, so it's definitely good if you want to do reform something that's still African. Um, and uh, it does have that big mission tree now because of Origins DLC, and you can form Aksum, Ak Aksum after, which is the first nation we talked about in this video. If you remember that, that felt like a year ago. But overall, pretty great to reform now, ever since Origins, uh, the Origins DLC had came out. Uh, the thing is, though, because it is an endgame tag that does downgrade it from where I want to put it at an A to about a mid B. Uh, probably better than uh, these guys right here, because at least Ethiopia has a full mission tree. Georgia. I don't even know why I put this on this list. Is, is anyone going to be reforming Georgia um, ever? Um, uh, you have no missions. And the ideas are okay. You got infantry combat ability, infantry cost, construction cost, and manpower recovery speed. Uh, are they good ideas? Not really. You can get a lot better ideas if you spend your efforts. But you know me, I can't give them F. They have ICA and construction costs and manpower recovery speed. Definitely going to have to give them a D. Right behind Pomerania. Morocco. This is a reformable that deserves to be in A tier just because of one thing. And that's its perm modifier for mission that gives 2.5 discipline for the entire game. I love perm modifiers and reformables and Morocco's got it. I'm going to put it in low A. I'm actually going to put Hawaii lowest A though. <laughs> It feels weird having Hawaii over England. Mamluks. This is actually a reformable that's super easy to reform. All you need to do to reform Mamluks is be an Ikta and uh, own Cairo. And Mamluks not exist. You do that, you can form Mamluks. You can get that nice government type. It's pretty nice. You know, advisor cost for your ruler's culture is really good. Um, and also the bonuses you get. Um... Uh, and uh, you can, uh, it could be a good tag to form like as Tunis, 
uh, keeping the Tunisian idea so you can keep raiding coasts. Uh, that's actually the nation we're going to talk about next. Um, uh, overall, the, it's really easy to form. Uh, just the e how easy it is to form t and get the Mamluk government type as any nation. You don't necessarily have to take the ideas. Um, you do get like three missions. Um, I have to give it another low A. I'm gonna be giving. I'm giving a lot of low A's. I feel like uh, my distribution is a bit top heavy. I, I don't care. I'm going to put it uh, just uh, below Morocco and Hawaii. Next is Tunis. This is like reforming Morocco, but like worse. Um, your mission tree is not as good as Morocco's. Your ideas aren't as good as Morocco's. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, at least you can form them to pop a bunch of missions that give you money, I guess. I'm going to put these guys in C, right between Bulgaria and Japan. Yemen, Yemen, Yemen. These are one of the nations that I feel like should have better ideas, but it doesn't. And if you look at Rossids, those guys have cool ideas. They're not the strongest military ideas. They're not even that good of military honest, uh, ideas, to be honest. But, um, they are, but they are cooler than Yemen's ideas. You do also get two missions outside of your generic mission trees as Yemen. Ooh, two missions. But yeah, uh, reforming them, uh, I'm not re seeing really a purpose to reform them. Um, it is really easy to reform them if you start as Rossids. So after you finish the two missions that you get from Rossids, you can form Yemen to get two different missions, uh, besides the generic missions, of course. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to put this in C tier, uh, probably between Bulgaria and Tunis. Actually, worse than Tunis. Tunis, actually, yeah, worse than Tunis. I'd have to put this in D tier, probably... Yeah, ahead of Georgia. Oh, die Viet. This nation used to stink, but now they have a bunch of missions and their ideas are actually pretty good for single player. You got core cost reduction there, morale of armies, manpower, tech cost, infantry combat ability. Overall, not bad. Not as good as Siam. Not as good as Siam. Like, if you're culture converting in that area, might as well form Siam, right? Uh, but, um, you know... You can't, you know, it's better than some of these other formables out there with the mission tree and stuff. So I do have to put it up a bit higher, probably around Romania, Saxony level, a bit lower. Yeah, uh, better than Lanfang, uh, probably better than these three. France. Oh, this is easily an S tier reformable, probably between Russia and Siam. Not only do you get 20 morale of armies from the Ilan idea, you also get French musketeers in the age of absolutism, which is very big. And you also have the unique French revolution in the age of revolutions. And again, it's one of those nations that paradox blessed with a bunch of events, mostly being positive. France is a great reformable, and that's why you see a lot of players reform it in multiplayer and in single player. Orisa, 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 Orisa. So Orisa is a reformable. And um, I was actually going to not put this on this list, but then I remembered about something really cool that I wanted to share with you guys about the culture that you need to form Orisa, not about Orisa itself. Overall, reformation is pretty lackluster. There's not really much to do. Uh, there's not really a reason to do it besides maybe the mission tree, maybe your Bengal who just finished the mission tree or something. I don't know. But um, what uh, you can do, uh, as an Indian nation, specifically Bengal, which was the vanilla strat, like the meta strat in EU4MP, is that as Bengal, you switch to Nepali culture, then you become Nepali, then you form Nepal around late 1500s, 1600, and then you start culture converting to Arisa's main culture, uh, which is Aria. Um, and you don't do it so you can form Arisa. You do it to get the Nayankara unique government type that this culture gets. Um, that's besides the point, though. That's just something that I want to tell you guys about. Um, outside of that, though, there's not really much to do, but at least you do get missions. It's the same thing as like Daivit here, so I'm going to just put it on the same level as Daivit in the B. And finally, our last one is Poland. It's, it looks a little bit weird. I downloaded it off the wiki. And this one is, again, another S tier. I'm going to put it in between... I'm probably... Yeah, I'm going to put it in between France and Siam. Uh, again, uh, Poland, top tier ideas. Top, top tier ideas. The only... Better military ideas than Polish ideas are Prussian, and that's only in vanilla. If you're playing on a mod that makes 100% uh, cav ratio, like I was in my Poland video, uh, Poland just has the best military ideas in the game. 
um, you know, on top of Kozak's and your 33 com cav combat ability and whatever ideas you go, you can stack insane cav combat ability as Poland. And um, you could, you see that a lot in multiplayer lobbies where players kill Poland just so they can form Poland, which in some MP mods like Gecko, um, they make it so Poland is not reformable. So Poland stops dying just because people want to form its nation. But yeah, and uh, not only that, you get access to some cool missions. Uh, most of them, uh, most of them, actually all of them are temporary modifiers. There's no perm modifiers in the Polish mission tree. However, there are two 75% discounted advisors in the mission tree, as well as the five discipline, a morale mission, as well as a cav combat mission. So very decent mission tree specifically towards multiplayer and uh, would be top S tier or even SS tier if this was a multiplayer only uh, tier list. But anyways, that's the end of the tier list, guys. I hope uh, maybe this time I did it better. Of course, this is my opinion. Um, you know, if you disagree with me, just write down below. Uh, I read every comment, even the really long, huge essay ones. I'll sit down, you know, with a cup of tea and uh, on my bed and sip my tea while reading your guys' long, huge uh essay about how i was wrong about that little point that i made but um yeah i do read them so i do and i do appreciate them um and the main reason why i want to redo this one was because i felt like i got some of the things wrong last time um i don't even know how different this looks to my last tier list i'm actually going to look afterwards and see how close this tier list is to my last tier list anyways though i hope you guys enjoyed that um I know some of you guys were asking about my France World Conquest campaign. So if you guys remember, I was saying I was going to do a France World Conquest where I do multiplayer ideas. So I pick quantity, economic, quality, etc. cetera, uh, religious. Um, the thing is, though, um, when I started that uh, campaign, um, I was uh, like two days after I started that campaign, um, I was given the new patch, Origins patch, and I decided to just play that. And I did a poll for you guys say, hey, should I continue the France campaign um, on the old patch or start on the new patch? And you guys voted about like 80% of you to 20% of you. If you didn't see the poll, I'm sorry. It's over now. We've already decided. But 80% uh, of you guys decided that I should play on the new patch. And that's totally fine with me. I'm going to restart it very soon. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitch so you can watch me live or or don't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can also watch me here on YouTube. Uh, if this is your first experience with me on YouTube, check out my other YouTube stuff. EU4 content is bussin', bro. We got so much EU4 content on here, and it's good stuff, trust. Even if you don't ever play multiplayer, that multiplayer content is juicy. The salt, the, 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 the strategies, the, the diplomacy, uh, the salt. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. Peace. Oh, yeah. Also, the DLC winner from my last Saturday video was announced. Dun, dun, dun.